I've teamed up with Honda to give my listeners a chance of a lifetime. Honda wants to send you and a friend to the 2019 Pro Bowl, uh, part, part, Pro Football Hall of Fame Enshrinement Weekend. Prize includes round-trip airfare, hotel accommodations, and the four-day diamond package with elite access throughout the weekend, including the class of 2019 autograph session, gold jacket walk, official VIP parties, VIP seating at the Concert for Legends, the Enshrinement Ceremony, the Hall of Fame game, and more. For more info and to enter, check out iHeartRadio.com slash R-E-S, brought to you by Honda. Great deals are waiting for you now at your local Honda dealer. A man who has that sounds been... like a better package than I get. What is your package, Kurt Warner? I don't know. I get a lot of access at the Hall of Fame, but I don't that sounded better than what, what oh, I Oh, come on. Now, hold on a second. Um, it's pretty well, good. Well, you're not part of the 2019 autograph session because right. you're already in. Right. Um, you've done the gold jacket walk. Yes, I got okay. that. Okay. Um, you could be invited to whatever party you want. Uh, VIP seating at the concert for legends. Yeah, you're know. the legend. I, yeah, so you've got VIP seating. Hold on a minute. Okay. The enshrinement ceremony, you're now going to be. I'll be up there. You're sitting there yeah. watching everybody, right? right? I'm up there. Ready okay, for the, so it's the same. The same Hall of Fame game and more. But here's the and more. We'll say that. The and more. What's you the, might not be part of the and more. Okay, what's that? But you can, which is appearing on the Rich Eisen show at the at the uh, oh, at the well, Hall of Fame. I know somebody that could make that happen. Oh yeah, that's so true. I could have the whole package. Very good. Hold on a minute. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. But Kurt that's, Warner, that's everybody. That's pretty good here package, by the way. <laughs> All right. Now you, however, in your incredible life and career, are going to have a first this year. In, on Sunday. I am. You're calling the Super Bowl. Yeah. On the radio on yeah, Westwood right. One. Yeah. That's so cool. I know. It, I mean, it is. It's what, What's amazing is that when, you know, you're growing up, you know, you think about the playing part of it. Um, but the amazing thing for me is that not only did it turn into an unbelievable career on the field, um, but this game has presented me with tremendous opportunities off the field. You know, afterwards, whether it's our show that we're doing together, or yes. traveling around, calling games, or you know now being able to call a Super Bowl, I mean that's been you know I'm just I'm so blessed in so many different ways, but it's uh, it's incredible that I'm sitting here at this stage and knowing that the game has uh, provided me with some incredible incredible things. Yeah, and the NFL has been kind enough to let us have the Lombardi Trophy on the mm -hmm. set here, and it's sitting right in between us. What what did it mean to you to lift this? Knowing again your story, a lot of folks think they know your story. But the amount of time and effort you took to put in to to never give in to those who said you can't right. all came to a head the night yeah. that you won this in this town. Right. By the way. I mean, I think that's the um, amazing thing was how quickly things happened for me once I got into the league. And so, um, yeah, I mean, you dream of winning that trophy and, and winning the Super Bowl and being a part of that. But for me, it was it was so much more because it happened so quickly. And it was that first year that I was starting and to go on to, to win the Super Bowl. Um, you know, I, it meant more than even winning the Super Bowl, I think for me, because it was the journey and it was the people that said you had no chance. And it was the moments that I remember sitting there with my wife going, is it just time to, to give up? Is it time to let the dream go? Um, How just often did you have that chat with Brenda, do you think? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if we had it a lot, but we had it a few times where, you know, you have those people that are in your life that want to support everything you do, mm -hmm. but they give you that look like, you know, I'm supporting you, but, but come on, dude. I mean, really, it, it's probably not going to happen at this point. It's just, you know, so at some point you have to let it go. I mean, you, I think about that with my kids. You know, my kids have the dream of playing in the NFL and doing that, and you know, I've got one that's playing in college now. In Nebraska. And, right, in Nebraska, and one that's, uh, you know, just 14, a freshman. But I just think to myself, for most people, it comes to an end at some point. And I've got to be ready as a dad to go, okay, it's been great, but maybe this is the end for you. And that's how the people, my parents, uh, my wife, as much as they wanted to support me and, and help me along this path, I mean, you get to be 26, 27, and it's like, you know, I love you, dear. And maybe the thing I have to tell you is it's time to let it go. And, um, you know, and I tell people all the time that, you know, we say, you know, how do you keep going? You know, how do you keep going when you're working in a grocery store and you're doing that sort of stuff? The funny thing for me was that everybody looks at sitting on the bench for four years and getting cut by Green Bay and going to the grocery store. And all I ever looked at was every time I played football, every time I was between the lines, my one year in college, player of the year in our conference, you know, when I played in arena football. We went to two championships. I was the best quarterback in the league when I went to Europe. And so what kept me going was 
nobody's ever shown me. I've never stepped on a field and not been, been able to be successful. And so I think that's what would have just killed me is had I walked away, never given the opportunity to succeed. I didn't want to be that guy that was 47 years old sitting on the couch going, man, if I would have just got the opportunity, I could have done it. Um, so that's what kept me going was just, I need that one legitimate chance to prove I can play. And thank goodness it came uh, from St. Louis Rams. Yeah. And then, and then came the opportunity to get play in this game again, here in this town in Atlanta. Right. What was it like for you that week? I never asked you this where again, maybe doubts could have maybe creeped in again. Is it, there's a lot of time between arrival and, and kickoff. <laughs> right. I mean, what was it like for you that week, knowing that the opportunity to right. cap it all off was, well, right the interesting thing is at that time, there was no week in between. That's right. So it was bang right into Super Bowl. So you really didn't have a week to think about it. And so that, I, that bruiser against Tampa. Right. Exactly. Happened then, on Sunday. Right. And you turn around. And, and Were you in Atlanta by Monday? Uh, I can't re remember if we left on Monday. Because I think, you know, they had preparations the week before. Like, if we win this game, yeah. here's what we've got and here's what we're going to do and here's when we're leaving and all that stuff. So I do believe we left on Monday. Um but the one blessing of that was you just hand over all the hotels and tickets and everything to your wife and, your, and hey, you guys take care of this. Um, but the other crazy thing about that week was at that time, they gave out all the awards, um, you know, for the season, the week leading up to Super Bowl. Right. And right. so what I remember is that it was practice and then it was media. And then I had to be whisked over to, to some banquet and, and, you know, I got like the MVP award. And so... There was so much going on that week that I was completely exhausted when the game, game came. I, I remember thinking to myself, can we just get this game over? I mean, this is the biggest game of my life, and I'm thinking, can we just get this game over with so I can relax? Um, so it had worn me out throughout <sighs> the week, and, you know, it, it was disappointing because obviously you want to enjoy it, and, and you enjoy the moment, you enjoy the three hours. But as I went back to the other Super Bowls later on, I was able to take a more of a deep breath and have a perspective on enjoying the moment that I'm in because they are so rare. But that first one was really crazy and I was worn out. I was tired because uh, I just didn't know how to handle it all uh, being that everything happened so fast. Well, Kurt Warner here on the Rich Eisen show uh, of that story. Some things that would definitely not happen again. One is no bye week. That right. will never happen again. Right. We will always have a bye week in between, yep. certainly now that they're playing the Pro Bowl in between, and now we also know in terms of, for sure, bodies and rest and health and, no and just the, the week off is a must-have. Mm -hmm. The fact that you were taken to a banquet during Super Bowl week as the quarterback of a team. Right. I mean, not even last year, night before the game, yeah. on an honors night, there's no like Brady wasn't gonna right, exactly. anyway on this green earth exactly without a very warm other place freezing over would he have been presented to accept right. that award for even yeah. ten minutes no, with right. a police escort from the hotel and back like hey Tom round trip exactly. Bill Belichick round trip it would be forty five minutes tops right just dress go and come back yeah never never <laughs> you were you were, you no. went to a banquet the uh, week of the yeah. Super Bowl uh, exactly I, a couple of them actually and. You know, the thing is, is that's crazy. I mean, the crazy. Yeah, I just didn't know how to say no. I mean, I think now, you know, like you'll see it at honors if somebody wins it that's in the game. Yeah, someone's going to accept They'll it. give you a video, yeah, right? Yeah, right? They'll video. give you a five-minute video, yeah, nice video you know, from your hotel room. But, I mean, at that point, I, I didn't know how to tell anybody no. I was like, oh, somebody wants to. Okay, great. But you know, for me, it's like, yeah, work. no okay. problem. Go. I mean, because I guess I, you don't I, even I, I don't even. I don't remember time. what he said. I just know somebody grabbed me and. You know, I do remember there was some police escorts. They took us to some great fast food restaurants, and I got some nice orange slushies and stuff along the way. There, there you was, go. So that was the highlight in between all those there trips. But, uh, but yeah, it was a, it was a crazy, crazy wow. week. Yeah. And now it's amazing. Here we are back in Atlanta. Yeah. Who's back in the game? The Rams. Now they're in Los Angeles. Right. Who are they getting to face? Brady, who obviously won his first at your That's expense, awesome. unfortunately. Yeah. And and um. Here we are again. What are the odds, Brockman? I know you're you're the uh, gambler amongst <laughs> us here, maker? and you've got now two NFL true. network people for whom we are not allowed. That's true. That's true. Is there a way to put hard-earned American dollars on the possibility of the Rams winning this game when the Patriots attempt to win it? Ends on the one yard line. Is there something <laughs> that could possibly be wow. to yeah, put you your money down? Yeah, you could probably uh, float that prop bet out somewhere and see who bites. Or what about a 
24 year old quarterback winning on a last second kick the last play of the game there's another know. one too well, what would be the odds of that i mean brady was 24 when he beat us and now here's and golf. golf is 24 and now they uh, win on a kick which is it was the first game in super bowl history to end on a kick the last play of the game so Come on. Yeah. Right, so get to work. Look into it. Get to work. Right, right, right. What are you stuff. doing over there? a lot of stuff going on here. By the way, that's but that's one storyline we have yet to even think of in yeah. terms of a parallel. Right. And Goffs went from Cal. Vince Ferragamo was the last Los Angeles Ram quarterback in this game, went to Cal. Okay. They're wearing the same sort of heaven can wait Warren Beatty type throwback uniform. Right. I think, they, yeah, they're wearing those. That was the. <laughs> That Super Bowl year was the last year we wore those uniforms. We Are changed, you serious? Well, not not against the Patriots. I'm the one in Atlanta, uh -huh. and then we changed to uniform. be more St. Louisy. Well, yeah, own to thing. have our own uh, our own colors at that point. So that Gosh. was. Uh, what do you think of this Super game, Kurt? Let's break it down. What do you got for me on this front? Well, uh, you know me. I could give you eight million different things. Okay, I mean, then. I just so then I tell you what. I could I, then sit here and say, "What's the one key?" Uh, knowing that there's ten, but I mean, yeah, so. I, I mean, I'm I'm excited about this game. I mean, I you know, I mean Brady against the pass rushers of the Rams. I think that's fascinating because anytime you want to beat Brady, you have to get pressure on him. And You're not, not going to get pressure on him. It's it's going to be a long day. And but, not to scheme your way to him. Mean, four sets of hands in the dirt, maybe certainly pushing up the middle. Right. That's the key. Well, yeah, a push up the middle. If now, you, you can. can scheme different things to get that push. But you're right. I mean, but but that's the, the key, right, is we got right. Sue and Donald up the middle. I mean, the, the two big guns for the, the Rams are up the middle, and that's, that is the key because – Brady's not going to beat you by escaping the pocket like a Patrick Mahomes. He doesn't want to go out of the pocket. So that is the key. So I'm fascinated by that side of it. Um, the other side, you know, with the Patriots, they're so good at scheming. What do you scheme to take away? I mean, are they going to take away the run game and allow opportunities uh, down the field in the big plays? But I'll tell you what, Rich, what I really, when I watch the Rams offense, I'm interested to see if the Patriots do the exact same thing they did to us in that game 17 years ago. Beat the crap out of the running back. Well, and, but the running back here is not as prevalent in the passing game. But beat the heck out of the wide receivers, if they can. Is get physical with two smaller type wide receivers on the outside uh, that they like to stretch the field and get down the field with them. Um, are they going to beat them up? Are they going to grab them? Are they going to? Get physical. Stephon Gilmore, he's a physical corner. When you watched him against the Chiefs, that's what they did is these guys are fast. We got to slow them down early, and we got to create pressure. And I, I'm interested to see if they go the same sort of route um, against the Rams this time that they did to uh, to start this whole thing. So what does McVay do to counter? Because this is the thing that I'm very much looking forward to seeing, these two guys, right? the, the, the modern-day yeah. Lombardi, against somebody who in the first hour, Steve Smith says, has an opportunity at age 33, yeah, wow. freshly 33, Crazy. making this Super Bowl and obviously having an impact on the league to the point of other hires. And we've, we're yeah. seeing similar yeah, formations right. being right. put together. Um, he thinks that McVay could have a similar Belichick-type impact based on the way that this young career has started. What do you think about yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, the response? Knowing that, that, I mean, that I'm not ready to put any – I mean – what the Patriots have done is I right. don't think we're ever going to see that again. So uh, I'm not ready to put anybody in that category, but you know, fascinating things that the Rams do formations and motions. You know, when you're talking about a team that plays a lot of man to man coverage, the hardest thing to do is when a guy goes in motion and you snap the ball when he's behind the quarterback or he's running a jet sweep and you're trying to play man to man coverage for that guy to be able to chase that guy to the other side of the field. And so with all the movements that they do, how does that counter what the Patriots want to do? How does that counter if they want to play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage? The other thing is, now Todd Gurley has, has caught a lot of passes the last couple of years in this offense. They haven't necessarily used him in a lot of route running. But that's another area where I think the Patriots are vulnerable is if they're going to play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, covering backs out of the backfield. I mean, Alvin Kamara had 11 catches last week and it just seemed like they could go to him all day long if they wanted to will there be something in this game plan from sean mcveigh using todd Gurley? and i know there's a lot of questions using todd Gurley in the passing game in a different way try to stretch the field or get some matchups on a high tower or one of those linebackers that we haven't seen before and so those are some things that i'm looking at because you know i just it, it fascinating of how the patriots like to play and how they i i can see them attacking this uh you know, Sean McVay type offense, but 
some of the counters that uh, that Sean might come up with. A few minutes left here with Kurt Warner. Pound the table for Isaac Bruce, whose name we might hear Saturday night to join you in Canton. I mean, all I can – I've been around a lot of great players, uh, great receivers, you know, guys like Larry Fitzgerald that will be a first ballot guy, Anquan Bolden, Torrey Holt, greatest route runner I've ever seen play this game. You know, that that starts it because I've, I've played against it and, and with a lot of great ones. But all you, to me, the hardest thing is, as you know, as you move farther into this thing, the stats of our game have gotten outrageous. But when Isaac Bruce retired, he was only the second receiver that had reached 15,000 yards in his career. I mean, only him and Jerry Rice when he retired. At that stage, now, I mean, there's still only, I think, five guys that have done that. And so I think he's gotten overshadowed by some of these guys that were on individual teams. But what I think we have to remember is how great Isaac was before the greatest show on turf because we put everything together with the greatest show on turf. And what he gave up, still being a, a great receiver, but I mean, we had Marshall, and we had Torrey, and we had, uh, you know, we had Oz, and we, we had all these guys that he had to share the ball with. Had that guy been on a team where he was the main guy his whole career, I think we're talking about a guy that's right there with Jerry Rice in terms of yards and, and what he accomplished. Uh, I just think that gets overshadowed a little bit because it was an unselfish team where everybody got touches, um, but he still ranks, you know, top 15 in catches, still ranks top five in yards. It's time to get that guy in. And, you know, and then you could go beyond that and off. I mean, I think of Hall of Fame and I don't just think of numbers. I don't just think of stats. I think of how you carry yourself, what you meant to an organization and what you meant to the league. And there's nobody that carried themselves better than Isaac Bruce um, that represented this league better than him. You couple that with the stats, I think he should be a slam dunk to, to be in the Hall of Fame. Well, we'll find out on honors on Saturday night, and obviously we'll talk about it on game day morning on our pregame show that starts at 9 a.m. Eastern time. It includes a lot of this X's and O's chat. And I, are you aware of the piece that I'm shooting on Saturday to air on Sunday? I am not. I okay. don't think I'm aware of it. I am uh, going to start promoting my run at the combine. Okay. Run Rich Run on behalf right. of St. Jude. I'm going to run at the NFL Super Bowl experience. You are going to run. I am on what? Saturday. On Saturday. I thought you just un un unveiled that one time. I do, but I have to make an exception this time because okay. the person who I'm running either with or hopefully not against is Usain Bolt. <laughs> well, wow. I mean, uh, <laughs> don't clap yet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what you guys are clapping for. <laughs> it's going to be a long day Sunday when we watch that video. Holy cow, Rich, that's eight and a half hours we get to talk about you getting... No, I think it'll be later in whatever. the afternoon. We might focus a little bit okay, more on might, something called the Super Bowl it. leading up okay. to that. Is this like, is it going to be like, I feel like it's going to be like Rocky, because I know you're training. Are we going to have like you out in the rain, in the snow, and chasing and, the rooster? Yeah, and I mean, is it going to be a whole thing? And then hit, we get hit, to the race and they don't show us the end of the race until... Hit, hitting hitting uh, frozen meat hung on the yes. hook? Yeah. I mean, I know you've been training for it this year, so we need to see training video. If yes. nothing else, you better get that ready for the combo. No, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm, okay. I, I don't know if you've noticed, but I mean, I've, I've. I, I did. Sorry, I didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did, but I will notice if you beat Usain Bolt. I don't know. I'm I will not, notice that on. I Sunday. don't expect to uh, beat him. I don't know. I don't know what to expect. Right. But um, it's well, set up. He's more of a 100, 200 guy. I know. So, I mean, in 40, you might be able to get him in 40. Oh, yeah, I'll get him yeah, in 40. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. He's, he's, he's much more starter. Exactly. And as you know, as you know, yeah. I, I have short bursts. Right. Speed. That's exactly. Early speed. Quick very speed. Short. I've got bursts. They're very short. But it's <laughs> it's Kurt speed. loves when I try physical challenges There's on live television. Uh, you so really love that. I cannot wait for that video. I, I can't wait till Sunday. I mean, so, I'm, I'm even more excited. I mean, I was thinking to myself, eight and a half hours, then I get to call the game for three and a half yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah, what are you going to do? It's going to be a long day, but now that guess. will help <laughs> break it up and will give me a little extra energy. I'm looking forward to that. At Kurt13, at Kurt13 Warner on both Twitter and Instagram. Love you, Kurt. Thanks for coming here. You bet, buddy. Kurt Warner here on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.